Hey, we're Jenny and Rich, and our stowaway is Twitchell the Marini Cat. We've been documenting the refit of our 1977 Tayona 37 Ramble On for the past several years. I don't think there's a single part of this boat that we haven't repaired, replaced, or improved in some way. We're proud to say we've done 99.9% .9 of the work ourselves. We've gained a lot of knowledge and experience in the process, and we're happy to pass that wisdom on. Hey, welcome back. Um, I think I said it in the last video, the big priority is to get the uh, Perkins overheating issue taken care of. I drained all the coolant out. I'm gonna, again, I think you saw it last time, I used a little, uh, one of these fuel things. Does a good job of siphoning uh, liquid out of a tank that doesn't have a drain on the bottom of it. But uh, I'm gonna pull the header tank and then pull the thermostat out, put the header tank back on and fire up the engine and see what happens. See if I can see coolant and everything circulating in here. If not, I'm gonna have to take it back off probably remove the water pump and check that and make sure that this fresh water cooling pump is actually moving. Um, making sure the impeller on the inside hidden behind this uh, cover plate is spinning uh, when the belt does. So let's uh, start taking it apart. So there we go. So this is what I was talking about. Mike, one of my concerns inside the engine is it seems like, I don't know what, at some point the antifreeze I used, um, it leaves this weird crusty stuff on the inside. I think I've talked about it before in previous videos. I'm not sure what's going on with it. The thermostat has a little bit of crust on it. I'm going to cook this thing out, probably just uh, change it entirely, but it's like a weird rusty residue on that as well. So I'm going to boil this in a pot of water and see if it still actually functions. So sucking the water out of the engine block, this actually doesn't look too bad inside the water passages. That was one of my concerns. So out of, this is in the cylinder head. And I also wanted to take a look inside. I'm probably going to end up pulling the exhaust manifold off as well. I need to suck the water out of here. All in all inside here in the head, in the cylinder head passages, doesn't look all that bad. Before I put the header tank on and everything, I'm just filling the block back up with fresh water. Uh, one thing I did was this, this uh, hose here that comes out the top of the block. Um, I put this flushing hose back on. Um, this used to go to our water heater. It went from here to the water heater, out the water heater, back to the uh, engine oil cooler. I took that hose, disconnected it when we were anchored out, and took the water heater out of the circuit. And then now I just disconnected it and ran one hose from here back to the back in the engine, uh, in the back in the lazarette, and then the other hose from the transmission cooler back into the lazarette. So I'm going to have a bucket of water and I'm going to run the engine, see if I get circulation, see if any crud gets knocked out, maybe hook up a flushing line here to the hose. You know, I'm just troubleshooting this and kind of trying to do it logically. If anybody knows or has had experience with this or had problems with their Perkins overheating, please give a comment. <laughs> Uh, 
water temperature start to climb. You can see the wonderful tachometer ain't working. I'm gonna have to figure that one out. We're only up to about 125 right now, but there's no water moving through the through the uh, engine right now. So where the raw water pump is working. All right, so I'm using this priming bulb again, and I've been shooting water into the hoses. And I can force water out the other end of the hose with this thing, manually. I'm not sure why water isn't circulating, other than if it's the fresh water pump on the, on the alternator belt. So either way, if I squirt it into the oil cooler, it'll come out the other side, out the top of the block there. Or if I squirt it into the hose that goes into the top of the block, it comes out the other way. It doesn't matter because the thermostat isn't in, so it just circulates it whatever way the pressure makes it go. If the water pump was running, see, I'm getting nothing out of here right now. If the water pump was going, it would only travel in one direction. Right now we're up to 150. So I just loosened up the fresh water vent and nothing's coming out the fresh water vent. So coolant is not circulating in this freaking engine. So for this cute little setup I've got a, uh, it's like a radiator flush kit. And that's what this uh, flushing T is. It's got a hose adapter. This thing has a one-way check valve on it. Hooks to a garden hose. attach it to the this side of the heater hose that goes out. I reconnected those two hoses in the bucket, brought the bucket in here, and I'm gonna do a little fresh water flush and see what it comes out of the uh, engine block. So it's flush in the engine water, and the engine water is really hot right now. Things, but I've already got a pretty good idea what it is, and I think it's the freaking fresh water pump that's attached to the alternator pulley, the serpentine belt, but... That's a new pump. It's a new pump when I installed that alternator. Yeah, the next step, I mean, I don't want to fix just any one thing, like mess with the take off the water pump. Oh yeah, hey, that was it. And then come back and find out that there's another problem with some kind of blockage in the, in the exhaust manifold or in the oil cooler right here. I've got the dual engine oil and transmission cooler. I think I'm gonna take the... Uh, heat exchanger off the back of the engine again and uh, double check that take it apart I've got to drain all the fluid out of it anyway I'm gonna do a major overhaul I think I'm gonna pull the valve covers off check the tappets on the uh, on the valves make sure the valves are opening and closing properly you know a little bit of adjustment and then you start pushing valves through your pistons and that could be a problem so another one of my theories was that under suction or whatever if the water pump is pumping away but you know I don't think it is right now. Um, these orange radiator hoses that I got at the auto parts store could uh, potentially collapse under vacuum or suction or whatever. And when they get really warm, they're actually, they get pretty soft. And one of the things I, this is, was part of the, uh, I think this was some extra hose that came with the boat. And it's Gates, it's Gates Green Stripe. It actually says Gates Green Stripe heater hose. Yeah. I think I'm going to get some of this. This is one inch, and this was from different pieces and parts that I clipped off to use for the uh, hooking, the, hooking the heat exchanger back up. I'm looking for some. This one seems to be a little more solid, but it's still flexible. I mean, I can still swoosh it, but I don't think it'll deform as easily. So I might order up enough gates hose to do the uh, plumb it all back into the loop. I want to put that water heater back in. Flushing clean water through the engine. I mean, this is going through the oil cooler up. It comes out the oil cooler, goes into the engine block down below. It comes, circulates through the engine block, goes out, goes through the radiator cap, goes through this hose into the exhaust manifold, comes back out this side, goes through this circulation pipe right here, through the heat exchanger, back around, goes back into the engine block, and comes out the top here used to be this used to be connected right back to the oil cooler right so that it's one like, pump does the whole thing does all that yeah this water pump right here does everything okay. that's the that's the perkins 
this is the low line model engine. This is the one with the header tank on the front. So do you think that running the engine these last couple times went out and it overheating to what it did? Do you think we did any damage to the engine? I hope not. Diesels are pretty tough and Perkins are tougher than hell. Um, I don't think that we got to the point where we could have scored cylinder walls or cracked a head or anything like that. Obviously, if we cracked a head, we'd be blowing blue smoke out the end because it'd be burning oil. Right. Or we'd be losing coolant into our oil and our oil would look like milk, coffee, foam, it would look like a foam latte. Just be all frothy and brown. And it's not. Of, yeah, it's jet black like <laughs> diesel oil should look. Well, it shouldn't, but <laughs> it does. <laughs> Okay, well, not something we wanted to do, but I'm actually, I'd be kind of relieved to have you go, go through uh, the whole engine. That's what diesel oil is supposed to look like. No, it's not. Because <laughs> I really don't want to have to pull the injectors and take the cylinder head off or anything like that. But if I have to, I have to. I could probably take the injectors and get them serviced. I mean, you know, I want to take the exhaust manifold off anyway to look inside the water circulation loop side of it and make sure there's no scale or crud or anything like that may take it to a radiator shop and have it hot tanked. Same with the oil cooler. I want to check my heat exchanger and that thing was brand new. We got that. That's a brand new C-Camp heat exchanger. Well, brand new. I put it in like seven years ago. But that's new for this engine. For this, for this <laughs> engine, that's pretty freaking new. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Next thing I'm going to do is pull the water pump. I got to loosen the belt, drop the alternator down a little bit, get the belt slacked. A few weeks ago when we were out anchored out, um, one of the things I did do was loosen this belt, just like I'm doing right now, and uh, check to see if the water pump turned freely. So, slack the belt. Yeah, I am going to have to... Nah, it'll come off. I got it. There we go. So the water pump system on the Perkins has two gaskets and a, there's an isolator plate. It's loose, but I don't want to tear the gasket because I'm going to have to make a duplicate of it. So this thing, yeah, the water pump is turning. So that's not the problem. No, I destroyed that gasket. I don't see anything. I don't, babe. Crap. Secured. One thing I did read in the Perkins manual, this is the back plate gasket is dry fit. It says dry fit right in the manual. What does that mean? It means don't use gasket sealant. Which you did. Which I did. I mean, you can see, see this, there's a little bit of gasket sealant material that moved into this cavity right here, but it's not enough to impede flow. Definitely not. But nonetheless, the engine is, uh, basically taken apart to the point where now I gotta I gotta figure out the problem. I don't know what else to say. So <clears throat> we do not think it's the pump that we thought it was. No, I don't think it's a pump and then the, the likelihood that this thing could migrate to a point where it was spinning unless you actually just sheared the hub and spun you know on the shaft and the impeller just got jammed up somehow. Yeah I'm just gonna clean things up, take things apart probably not going to be motoring for a while so I figure I'm going to check everything but the engine overheating issue still has not been resolved I've... so on the last video um, dude a lot of good comments a lot of really constructive input I wanted to say you know um, just with the check this check this check the exhaust temperature check the differential between the, the you know whatever the surrounding water is versus what the exhaust input is it should be like you know 20 degree variance or something like that um, mostly on the raw water side it seems like most everything I found on the internet about a Perkins is overheating on the raw water side I was reading Nigel Calder's diesel book a little bit um, where it says uh, Sometimes oil circulation or something like that could have a problem with one one particular cylinder overheating as a result of not getting good oil circulation or something like that. How does the oil circulate? Is there a pump for the oil? There's a pump down in the oil pan. Okay, in the oil pan. They call it a sump. So yeah, the oil pump, um, 
it uh, one, one thing we noticed yesterday when we fired it up, and I've noticed progressively, is that you turn on the en the engine alarm does not shut off until the oil pressure reaches like 45 or 50 psi. The engine typically runs at 60 to 70 psi when we're at throttle or actually motoring under load. It takes a, quite a while. I mean, the you know that is a concern because. Um, if the oil pump isn't pumping and the engine's cranking at 800 RPMs, that, uh, you know, you're not receiving the oil. It takes a long time for the oil pressure to get back to here where the sw actual switch is. It goes through all the engine galleries and the, the crankshaft bearings and the rod bearings and up to the lifters. All that, get me, everything under the valve cover gets coated in oil before it actually touches the engine switch and the engine switch realizes that there's actual pressure coming through the pump. The pump down here in the oil pan could be a little worn to the point where it's not making pressure as fast as it should or it could be gummed up. I'm going to probably see about getting this exhaust manifold off right now. Okay. Just because.